Hey everybody, this is Doug Standle with Speed Cove Precast Cove Base System for Epoxy Floors. Today I'd like to introduce the first in our series of quick tip videos. Today's video, we're going to talk about FRP installation. If you have FRP on the job site and you got to put Cove Base over it, we're going to talk about how you do that and how you don't do that. One thing to start off with, we do not recommend adhering to the FRP. And the reason why is, is FRP is, is a non-stick, easy clean surface. No products want to bond to FRP uh, very easily. It's, you have to prepare the surface of the FRP correctly and use the correct glues to get anything to bond to it. Now there's nothing wrong with Speed Cove um, that, that it doesn't want to bond to FRP. No products want to bond to FRP, whether it's tile, stainless steel, or anything. So uh, just want to make sure that's really clear. Uh, FRP is the problem child. Nothing wants to stick to it. But I'm going to show you several ways uh, to work with it and bond to it if we absolutely have to. So there's basically three situations that you're going to run into on a job site that has FRP on the job. First, let's define it. FRP is fiberglass reinforced panel. You can buy this stuff in uh, three by five sheets uh, pretty much at any building store, Home Depot or Lowe's. So it's a very common uh, wall covering and wall protection. And it's popular because it's cheap, it's easy, it's fast, and it, it's, uh, it's an easy clean surface. It's a non-stick surface. So nothing bonds to it. Nothing really wants to bond to it. Therefore, it's easy for the restaurant owner to mop it and clean it, or the bathrooms, uh, the bathroom owner. With FRP uh, comes the, the different uh, strips. So you'll have corner strips, you'll have end strips, and you'll have um, strips in the middle where two panels combine together. I want to, we mainly deal only with the bottom strip. So I'm going to show you those in a minute. So on our, this is called a J-mold termination strip. You can see it's a J, it's higher in the back than it is in the front. And so this is common in FRP. They put it on any edge to hide the cut and give it a nice clean look, a nice finished edge. There's usually about 3 eighths of an inch overhang. So you have 3 eighths of an inch to play with, uh, to work with. Uh, in order to hide the rough cuts that you made or somebody else made. So FRP is most commonly used in bathrooms and kitchens. Um, anywhere there's uh, open food or bodily fluids, uh, that's where speed cove is required and that's usually where FRP is required because it's a, a non-stick, easy clean, uh, very sanitary surface. So. So the, there's three uh, things you're gonna run into on a job site. Maybe the most common one is you're gonna come to the job and there's already going to be FRP on the walls and it will just be a rough cut. It'll just be a rough cut on the drywall. And it'll just end so many inches from the floor. Usually they just uh, glue it on and end it maybe one inch before the floor. So, and you have a job where you're doing an epoxy floor and you have to achieve cove base either four or six inches high, which is the most common. So the, um, so if you, uh, the, in the first scenario, you say you come to the job site and the FRP is already on the walls. Those guys are done, they're out of your way. You're gonna come in and install your, your epoxy floor and you need to achieve cove base. So the, let's just say that this FRP is down to the floor so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut the FRP off because again we don't want to try to bond to it it's better to instead cut the FRP off and throw it away remove it then put the J mold termination strip over your cut edge and then leave a gap that's exactly four or six inches high right underneath the FRP and the J-mold strip that you will place your speed cove, you'll, you'll glue it in straight to the substrate to the wall underneath the drywall. 
instead of gluing over the top of it. So the easiest way to do that is to, now there's something else I want to mention. Um, a lot of guys um, want to come into a room and just snap a chalk line. So they'll go up, let's say we're doing four inch cove base today. So they'll go over to the left side of the room, measure up four inches, right side of the room, four inches, snap a chalk line, cut the FRP off. And, uh, but there's a problem with that. And there's a problem with that method and most of the time it doesn't work for this reason. Most of the floors that are in kitchens and bathrooms have drains in them. And often the floor is sloping in several different directions to slope down to those drains. And so when usually when you snap a chalk line from the left side of the room to the right side of the room, it does not, that does not account for the ups and downs in the floor. So you may have, if you go four inches high, you may have three and a half inches in one place, and you may have five and a half somewhere else. Well, the Speed Cove preformed cove base comes at exactly four inches out of the box. So the easier way to do that is to take a, a block of wood or uh, just a scrap of plywood, rip it exactly four inches wide, and make it about two feet long, put a screw in it, that's your handle. And then you would take this and scribe cut all the way around the room. So I forgot to bring it today, but imagine I have a, a four inch uh, diamond grinder uh, in my hand, just a, just a grinder with a diamond wheel on it. So you would turn on your grinder and you'd lay it right on the top of this board and you would drag that around the room and it would cut the FRP off at exactly four and an eighth to four and a quarter. The nice thing about a two foot piece of wood is it's gonna go up and down and it's gonna follow the undulations in the floor, which is what you want. So then your finished cut is exactly four and an eighth to four and a quarter. Once you have cut that, FRP um, at below that four inch mark, you want to pull it off the wall and throw it away. Then you want to come up underneath the FRP and with the J-mold strip. Now, if it's already, if the FRP is already glued to the wall, um, what we recommend is you get a tiny pry bar and a hammer and just tack, uh, tap it up underneath the FRP and pry it away out of its glue for the first inch or two. Just make it loose, so then you can slip your J-mold termination strip underneath it. Now a trick on the J-mold the J -mold strips is to put a, a 45 degree back cut on it in the back side, because when you're trying to slide it up underneath the FRP, it likes to catch. But when you cut the 45 off, it doesn't do that. So it just makes it much easier to slide it up underneath there. Now, once you've, uh, once you've loosened the FRP for an inch or two, all the way along the bottom, then you'll get your J-mold strips, slide them on. I found the easiest way to put them on is with a, a one inch putty knife, and you can just come up and just pry them, just go into the drywall and pry it up into place. Start on one side and Maybe tape it with blue tape and then work your way to the other side. It's easier to work from one side to the other. And uh, so once you have your, your J-mold uh, on, it will look like this. And um, so now you have your FRP cut and your J-mold is installed and you're exactly at four and an eighth, four and a quarter. Now you can, and you can adjust your J-mold up and down uh, so that it lands right on top uh, or leaves an exact four inch gap uh, for your speed coat. So, so then uh, you, would, you would glue the top of the speed cove to the bottom of the J-mold strip. You'd put one bead of glue in here and adhere that uh, to there. Then that's also sealing this gap so when soap, grease, water, and chemicals come down the wall, they do not get in behind anything and delaminate or make anything peel off. So then once you have that uh, sealed with your glue and in place, you know, now you're ready to coat the floor and come all the way up to the J-mold. Now, another, um, 
Another trick is to use the, uh, the blue tape. And a lot of guys like to use uh, blue tape uh, across the, uh, the J-mold strip. And then, uh, so that way you have a nice clean line above the speed cove. And you can let your glue and your primer and your coating come over that. And then when you're done, peel that off and you have a nice clean straight line. And it makes it look great. Now, there is another trick that is definitely worth looking at. Um, 3M created a tape called a, uh, a wire tape. It's, uh, I believe it's about one inch wide, three quarters of an inch to one inch wide. And it has a microscopic piano wire in one side of it. And the advantage of that is to, when, when, you're, when you're coming up here and you're, you're, wanting to, you're wanting to put, you know, glue that on, some of that glue is gonna go over. Your next coat's gonna be your primer. Some of that's gonna go over. Your next coating, your final coating, some of that's gonna go over. So instead of having to keep peeling the tape and retaping the entire room, if you use the, the wire tape, you can just put it on there one time, leave it there, put the wire at the bottom, and every layer that goes up over that nice clean line, you just leave it after you're all done. So you have three or four coats of layers that have gone up over it. You come over to the side, peel the wire out, and the wire acts like a razor blade and cuts through all three layers and saves you a ton of time and, and, uh, and labor. And then after you've pulled the wire and made a nice clean cut, you can pull the tape and you're done. And you have a perfect uh, clean, uh, clean line. So that's, uh, that's kind of a, a little speed trick that a lot of guys like to use. Um, they're uh, the, the bed liner, the rubber or the um, polyurethane bed liner companies out there now also make their own uh, truck bed, spray-in truck bed liner wire tape. So you can find that online on eBay or Amazon under your favorite truck bed liner. A lot of those guys will sell that. That's, they use wire tape in the back of your truck when they spray your bed liner in to get those nice clean lines to come out around the tailgate. So, um, so that's, where, that's where you'll find it. That was our first in our quick tips series videos dealing with what to do if you have FRP on the walls when you're coming in and doing an epoxy floor with Cove Base. We talked about the three different snarls you're going to run into, uh, how to deal with each one, uh, which one to pick if you have a choice, which one's more ideal than the other. And if you have any questions, feel free to call us 560-344-9000 is our our office line and hit option one to catch me or option two to catch um, our secretary. And make sure if you like this video to hit, click the like button. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the subscribe button down there to subscribe as we are gonna be putting out a lot more of these little quick tip videos and most of them will be a lot shorter. The FRP one is gonna be the longest because uh, it's a little harder but uh, we'll be putting out more and more of these little quick tip videos uh, for you, uh, for your convenience. So you can just open your phone when you run into a situation, go to the website, go to our YouTube channel, uh, click that video, watch it and get right back to work. So I hope that's helpful and um, we'll catch you next time.